You know how every year the BBC releases a few books to tie in with that year's series of Doctor Who? When I was younger, and whenever I saw one of these books in the charity shop, I'd pick it up there and then, but I don't think it was because I wanted to read them at the time. I think it was more that I liked the cover and the actual collecting of these books. As a consequence, they sat on my bookshelf for years, and, bar a few exceptions, they were merely aesthetic decoration. Until recently, when I thought that a good way of spending my now much more plentiful free time would be to work through a few of these books. So this video is essentially an exploration of what I've been reading recently, with brief reviews of some Doctor Who books that I'd recommend for those looking for Who-related reading material. Welcome then to the Cynical Who Book Club. Word before we start that while I may allude to certain events within the books I'm about to discuss, I will be careful not to divulge any major spoilers regarding these stories. So without any further ado, let's get started right away. The first book on the list was the first Doctor Who book to be published as part of the Quick Reads range of books for reluctant or illiterate adult readers. As the name suggests, this is a very brief entry that barely exceeds 100 pages. I am, of course, talking about I Am A Dalek by Gareth Roberts. Love him or hate him, Roberts certainly has plenty of experience writing for Doctor Who in print, and lends his skill pretty well to the challenge of telling a Doctor Who story in half the normal length of a Who novel. His contribution does the Daleks justice, with a story that benefits from its simplicity and small scale, featuring only one Dalek and succeeding in making it feel like a serious threat, yet at the same time managing to do new and unusual things with the Daleks by making them rely on humans with certain genetics to resurrect them. My only gripe would be the ending. Despite it being lovely and heartwarming in light of what happens in the novel, I would like to know how the Doctor knew to go to that specific time and place, and why he's so laid back about doing what he does given he's so normally cautious about changing time. The next entry is also a short read, coming in at 120 pages, and half of those pages are taken up by admittedly brilliant and fitting illustrations. The Boy Who Kicked Pigs is, I concede, a bit of a wild card entry, given it's not really related to the world of Doctor Who in terms of what happens. But it's written by the fourth Doctor, Tom Baker, so there is a Doctor Who connection and it does count for this list, so there. If, like me, you enjoyed Baker's unique writing style in his other book, Scratch Man, which was related to Doctor Who, then you may want to give this a shout, as it possesses a similar tone of voice. You'll especially enjoy it if you share my love for black comedy and the grotesque. The protagonist of this short story is basically the ultimate sadist. There's a scene where, without going into spoilery detail, he decides to commit a crime with a crossbow, and it ends up having far worse consequences than he could ever have hoped for. The chain reaction he causes is absolutely terrible, but it's so over the top and so hyperbolic that I couldn't help but laugh at the absurdity of it all. Baker clearly had a ball right in this book, and because of that, the chances are very high that you will also have fun reading it. Not for the faint-hearted, but otherwise very funny, and a great exploration of a wicked man's psychology. The Clockwise Man was one of the first books to be released linking to the new series of Doctor Who, and is written by one of the show's most prolific authors for print, Justin Richards. At 250 pages, it's a much more demanding read, but has a nice air of atmosphere and mystery, being at its simplest levels a whodunit thriller set in 1920s London. At least, that's how it first appears, but of course events soon go in a very different direction. The book features weaponised London landmarks, clockwork robots, war criminals, and supposed heirs to the Russian Tsar's throne. If it already sounds complex and slightly tricky to get your head round, good, that proves you're sane. Not that I'm complaining about that though, I had a fun ride with it. Not much else to say about it though. Next up is 2009's The Slovene Excursion by Simon Gurrier, featuring a plot based around making profit from tourism regardless of the consequences, 
that lends itself nicely to everyone's favourite farting green aliens. I'm sure some of you will be relieved to hear that there are no skin suits and hence no overabundant flatulence in this story, with the Slavine being well served by a captivating plot that effortlessly explains how certain parts of Greek mythology came into being and somehow feels like one of the lighter romps on this list. There's something in this book for everyone, and turning the page is incredibly easy and irresistible with this effort. Now we head slightly back in time to 2007 for the next four entries. The Doctor and Martha Jones travel to Tierman's world first of all for sick building by Paul Mars, which may well contain the craziest scene of Doctor Who in any medium that I have come across as of May 2020. About halfway through the book, the Doctor is being chased by a bear through the large house where most of the book is set. His companions at this point are a talking sun lounger and a talking vending machine. And you thought Frobisher the shape-shifting penguin was a mental idea when Big Finish did it. But it gets even better because the Doctor's way of dealing with this urgent issue is for this unlikely trio to sing Bohemian Rhapsody to the bear. How do writers come up with this stuff without taking illegal substances? That alone would probably be enough to justify the book if I hadn't unavoidably spoiled it, but the story serves as a good commentary on automation and features only a few characters, but characters that are compelling nevertheless. I thought it was perhaps a bit long for its own good, and certain elements are perhaps not necessary, but there are plenty of satisfying moments and I enjoyed it in its current form. Moving on now to The Last Dodo by Jacqueline Rayner. Just as Sick Building has a point to make about our over-reliance on machines, so Rayner writes a pretty fun text about the issue of animal preservation. This one wasn't so much of a page turner, but it does have its moments and it gets its points across without feeling too heavy handed, although certain plot details do resolve themselves a bit too quickly, such as the Doctor being incapacitated only to be rescued almost immediately, although the consequences of his rescue do drive the story further on. I'm in two minds on this one to be honest, as I did like it and I found it highly original, but I had to force myself to read on a bit more than I did with the next two books. Whereas I read them both in two or three sittings, I seem to recall The Last Dodo taking a few more days longer. You see, The Pirate Loop, which is another Simon Gurrier contribution, it was much more gripping in the sense that I got through two thirds of the book in one sitting. I just couldn't help but turn the page to see what happened, it was that exciting. It jumps around in time quite a bit, so it might be difficult to keep up with, and it loses a tiny bit of steam towards the end, but I still had enormous fun with it, and if space operas with badger-faced pirates and chimes of midnight style time loops are your thing, then hopefully you should as well. And now we come to what may be the best two Doctor Who books I've ever read, and both of them happen to be by the same author, Trevor Baxendale. First of all, I recently read Wishing Well. Its plot is in some ways rather simple, and will have mass appeal without feeling too simplistic to the point of feeling unfinished. The characters here really feel three-dimensional, i.e. you're made to hate characters when they're described until you hear their own points of view, and vice versa characters you initially sympathise with make mistakes. I read it in just two settings with hardly any qualms or ill will. There's everything you could possibly expect or want. Humour, horror, pathos, mystery, tension and excitable dogs. This is possibly the book I enjoyed the most during my spree of lockdown reading at time of recording. But that said, I don't think there was that much between all the books I read. It's easy to pick nits, but I enjoyed them all to extents that only varied slightly. A couple of years ago, I also read and highly appreciated Baxendale's Dalek novel, Prisoner of the Daleks. I've said before, and I'll say it again, Dalek stories should offer something new, and they shouldn't pussyfoot or take any prisoners, because the Daleks are brutal creatures. That really comes across here, even when a Dalek is seemingly killed, it can't be trusted. We get one of the starkest glimpses of how the Daleks treat their prisoners, and the Tenth Doctor and the other human characters here, they're written beautifully, with the conflict between them never being anything less than engaging. Some honourable mentions, i.e. other books I'd read before lockdown that I would recommend. The Ultimate Monster Guide is about 10 years out of date, but I feel like I should put it here given the considerable amount of time I spent as a wee nipper leafing through it. I didn't think it was possible to nip you in, but I did used to be very good at it, until I grew up at least. Then Wet World by Mark Michalowski is alright, I guess. 
Although given the choice, I'd probably go for David Llewellyn's Night of the Humans. Or James Goss's selection of tongue-in-cheek poetry, Now We Are 600. There's also the Resurrection Casket by Justin Richards, though I'm less used to the book than I am to the abridged audiobook, read wonderfully by the Tenth Doctor himself, Mr. David Tennant. But if there is one book that all fans of Doctor Who ought to check out as a necessity, in my personal opinion, then my candidate would be the closest we've got yet to a Russell T. Davis autobiography, The Writer's Tale. That is specifically the later revised version, subtitled The Final Chapter. This is a series of emails between Davis and journalist Benjamin Cook, spanning a good two and a bit years while Davis was showrunner and planning the 2008 and 2009 runs of Doctor Who. There's writing advice, jokes and drama, as Davis spends his time either bemoaning his writer's block and panicking at the pressure on him and the fact he is again Mr. Deadline or not written anything, or talking about how certain things came together and contemplating some possible story ideas out loud. The emails even become an important historical document at times, as ideas come during the emails. At one point Davis realises how the Tenth Doctor should regenerate right while he's halfway through typing, and you get to see his joy at this revelation. It gets a bit repetitive from around about chapter 23 onwards, but that was unavoidable. At 700 pages, it won't be for everyone, especially those who aren't so interested in the behind the scenes aspect of it all. But for those who are, it's a fascinating read and an important insight into what it was like to be at the centre of what was then the biggest show on television. So, there we are 15 books for the Doctor Who fan. No, seriously, it was 15. You go back and check properly. I'm sorry if my thoughts and analysis weren't that great, but hopefully you feel inspired and enlightened, though hopefully not Black Guardian style. Because reading is... well, it's a pastime. And by doing it, you can reap the rewards and feel self-righteous. You can blag to your family about the fact that you've been reading. You can think you're cleverer than you actually are because all the best and most intelligent people read. It makes you a greater sex symbol. It gets you away from screens. Unless, of course, you use a Kindle or other electronic device. In which case, may I respectfully suggest that you're not doing it right. It will open your mind and not leave the message in the process. It will cure your homosexuality. It will allow you to make controversial ideas. It will allow... Um... 